Yo, what up, what up? It's me again. Mike cut it in. Mike cut it, Mike cut it, Mike cut it. Eh. Mike cut it. Eh. Mike cut it. Eh. Mike cut it, Mike cut it, Mike cut it. Eh, eh, what I'm talking about right now. We having a good sign tonight. Talking about Miss E. Van Zant. Yes, we gonna Miss E. Ella tonight. Okay, talking about Sisters with Secrets. Uh, quick shout out real quick to my subscribers. Thank you all so much. I had a goal to reach 150 subscribers and I definitely met that quota so I appreciate you all so much for just believing in me I definitely want to give you more content okay if you haven't got into the channel already please get into it because it's definitely something for everybody to get into all right here we go so bow we got Miss Iyana talking about sisters with secrets and it was four ladies in this episode and um, the main lady was Miss Jackie. Miss Jackie is the mother. She's the mo mother of Nikki and Brianna. And uh, also, uh, she's the sister of Miss Latanya. And Miss um, Latanya will find out that she pretty much don't want no dealings with Jackie's ass. And she over her ass. And um, that's a damn shame because they supposed to be blood sisters and kin. But... Like I said, they got this riff going on. So let's get into the first scene. Miss Iyala's sitting down with Miss Jackie. And Miss Jackie's pretty much telling her, you know, I pretty much wrote you to let you know that I want to get this whole situation straight with my family and my daughters especially. And I want to have a relationship with everybody and just clear up this whole shit. She also lets her know that she feels disconnected with her four kids. Now, mind you, we're learning about two of them in this episode, but it's four of them total. So, I don't know what the other two is, but whatever. She feels disconnected with them, but she's going to start with these two right here. Miss Nikki and Miss Brianna and everything. And, um... You know, she lets her know that at age 15, she had Miss Nikki. And Miss Nikki is um, the oldest. And Miss Nikki was pretty much raised by Miss Jackie's mother, which is the grandmother of Nikki. And um, I don't understand that whole situation. From what I understand and what I gather from it... Um, Miss Jackie's grandmother uh, was pretty much, you know, told her to step the fuck aside. I got this. You don't know what you're doing as a mother. And, um, you know, I got this grandbaby and everything. And, I, you know, I've seen this situation happen quite a few times in my own, you know, dealings with people and everything. And, uh, grandmother, you was wrong. I know you, 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 um, passed away and everything. God rest your soul. But you was wrong for that whole situation. Your job in that situation was to nurture that girl and teach her how to be a mother. Not to relive your whole, um your whole duties of being a mother. Your do your job was to be a grandmother and to be a coach to your daughter so she could be a good parent to her daughter. But that's not what you did. You chose to take on the whole role and you was wrong as fuck for that. Okay? So let's just go on and put that out there and everything. And, um, you know, at age 15, she did all that. And then we come to find out at age 16, she pretty much kicks Miss Jackie out, according to Miss Jackie, and was just like, you know, um, you know, you can't stay here no more. You know, I got your daughter, and you need to go fan for yourself. And, you know, I'm not sure Miss Jackie was leaving some parts and stuff out, but apparently um, Miss Jackie, according to Latanya, that we find out that she was lashing out at the house and everything. And, of course, ain't no mother going to deal with no disrespect or anything. So, you know, I'm pretty sure she did kick her ass up out the damn house. But, you know, in that situation, somebody should have reevaluated and understood that this whole lashing out process was a, a a call for help or whatever. And nobody really answered her call. And that's why this whole situation came about with Miss um Miss Jackie, the grandmother, and everything like that. So um after she gets kicked out the house and everything, she meets Brianna's father, who pretty much introduces her into the prostitution life, where she was out there selling that Gucci or whatnot on the corner. And uh, apparently she was making good money because she definitely forgot all about, you know, Nikki at the house and everything. And she just pretty much took all concern on to to Brianna and uh, I can understand how that may be may have came across to her because 
as being a mother and you got a grandmother that's actually done stepped in to be a mother and everything, you know, she probably like, you know, my daughter's good. She's taken care of and my mama don't even want my help with this daughter and the daughter is probably already acclimated into, you know, as the grandmother being the mother and everything. But, you know, Miss Jackie, you need to understand you always the mother. You should have always interjected yourself in the damn situation, whether regardless of, of the fact or whatever. Um, um, if your mother was them taking on that role. So, boom. And everything. And, um, like I say, we find out that Brianna's father introduced her into the whole life of prostitution and being into, you know, the massage parlors that she calls it and everything. We already know what that is, what was getting massaged and all that. We, we know what was getting massaged, baby. You know. And, um, you know, Come to find out, she was doing that all the way up to she was five months pregnant with Brianna. Pretty much got all types of people knocking on Brianna's forehead or whatever. And, you know, that's a sad situation because, you know, you don't really put your daughter at risk and everything. And apparently the damn father, he didn't give a damn and he did his ass whoop because damn shit. They definitely didn't, um, he didn't do what he was supposed to do as being a protector of his daughter and everything. All he was pretty much was the Pimp is what I get from the situation. And so, you know, like I say, he 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 pretty much fucked her over and Miss Jackie, she just fell in line and was just like, you know, whatever you want from me or whatever, and I'm gonna go with it. And that sucks because that actually carried on into her adulthood and everything. She said that she was well into tricking all the way up to she was past 19, 20 years old, which is a sad situation and you know, you don't want nobody to be selling their body, you know. You don't ever want to hear about a woman out there selling her body to make ends meet. Or especially if they was influenced by a man or whatever, you know. Because pretty much Brianna Daddy was her pimp. That's what I get from the situation or whatever. But nevertheless, she ended up raising Brianna to be a nice, you know, looks like pretty much respectable woman. So that lets me know she had great motherly capabilities and stuff. So, boom. She also reveals, you know, that she had no relationship with her father. And um, she pretty much... Um, you know, he, he was a schizophrenic and all that. And, um... Also, you know, she reveals, too, that, um, you know, she wants to be a better person and she wants to, like I say, be there and she wants to just rectify this whole situation like we said in the beginning. You know, we believe you, Miss Jackie. You have definitely proven yourself. You know, you did a great job sharing your story at the beginning of this whole episode. We did a great job of understanding who you was. And I'm pretty sure Missy Yala did too because she definitely had you go lay on her bosom and everything just to let you know that everything was going to be okay. And I don't think she ever had that kind of compassion gave to her ever since she was, you know, prior to 15 years old before she had that first baby, Nikki, and stuff. So, boom. We moves right along to Miss Tanya, which is the sister of Jackie. And Jackie, she ain't buying it. She was like, hell no, motherfucking, um, um, shit. Not Jackie. Shit, I done fucked that up. Tanya, ja Tanya not buying it. She like, Jackie want to be damn, um, famous and boom. And, um... You know, I'm just not buying the wolf tickets that she's selling and everything. She's the liar. She's done it. She's a manipulator. She's everything or whatever that I'm not. When truly, Miss Tanya, you are the same damn person. Just by the way that you was carrying on and everything like that. You know, you kept cutting Miss Iyanla off when she was pretty much trying to tell you how Miss Jackie was feeling about the situation and why she reached out to her and everything. Like I say... You know, Miss Tanya, you need to do some soul searching within your damn self or whatever because, you know, you done built up this whole wall against Miss Jackie and you pretty much can't see your can't see shit but your own damn thoughts at this point in time. And we over your ass because, you know, no everybody deserves to be heard and everybody deserves a damn second chance. And that's pretty much what the help Miss Iyala was saying. I was like, you know, I think you really got your sister mistaken. You got your sister mistaken because your sister really wants to change. And I really feel that in her. And I think everybody at home, we felt that shit as well. And, um, you know, it just, you know, it just was sad to see how she was carrying on 
about her sister and how she just felt like that, you know, her sister won't shit, basically. And she just felt like that, um, she was putting on airs for the damn show, for Iyala's show. And, um, uh, so pretty much we goes on to find out, you know, Jackie, she pissed. She like, oh, no, hell no. If you gonna be meeting with this chick, I don't want no parts of this motherfucking show. It tell Iyala her ass need to motherfucking damn do some damn fucking intervention. This shit, because I already know how this manipulating chick is. She gonna sit here and try and rewire the whole situation. Make me look like I'm the motherfucking damn fault. When I'm really not the fault. It's really her ass and everything. And um, she called her a big nose, uh, uh, a bee and everything like that. And, you know, she even goes to say, you know what I'm saying? You know, I let all her motherfucking shit bear on the damn thing. And she want to sit there and go there and everything and let the people know that, uh, yeah, you raped me whenever I was a dang gone child and everything. And, um, just the same way that you was raped by such and such. Well, no, who the hell such and such, such, such is because they kept bleeping out the shit with the little stars. But, yeah, you was raped and you, you put that same shit on me or whatever. And so, yeah, we're like, what, girl, your damn sister's up here molesting you and everything, and she's sitting up here putting on all these fronts and everything in front of the damn camera. Girl, girl, I see why the hell you got animosity towards, you know what I'm saying, the situation and everything, and I see the why, well, you don't really have animosity, Miss Jackie. I see why the hell Miss Tanya got animosity, because she don't want her motherfucking shit to be slipped out, but too late, because Miss Dang on Jackie was like, oh, hell no, we're going to let this damn cat out the bag in the midst of my motherfucking anger, and that's when you know when people is telling the 100% truth. When they piss the fuck off, they'll let you know who the hell and, and what the hell is going on and how the hell they truly feel about the situation so boom we already knew that there was nothing but the truth because the way she snapped on that damn phone with Miss E. Amber. yeah Tanya your ass did it you was up here doing whatever 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 that's all I'm saying about that right there so um Pretty much the day two comes, and um, Iyala, excuse me, is talking again to Miss Tanya. And Miss Tanya, you know, she's just letting her know, you know, I still think that damn Jackie's full of shit, and I ain't buying none of the stuff that she's selling. And Iyala's like, let me play this for you. And so she plays the audio clip of, like, basically saying, you know, she raped me and everything like that. And Tanya, like, uh-uh, I ain't entertaining that. I don't believe that shit. Fuck that shit. She lying. Whatever. Uh, the fact that you are sitting here um, trying to deny the situation makes you look even more damn guilty, in my opinion, or whatever. Because why would this lady sit here and come up with this damn story at the crack of her ass or whatever. And then we anything we know about any people that's been out there in the streets, prostitutes, crackheads, all that, them people don't mind telling you their damn story or whatever, especially when they got a story to tell. So definitely, it was definitely believable on Miss Jackie's part. And by the fact that you don't definitely want to even talk about the situation, makes you look even more guilty, okay? Guilty by omission, girl. Guilty by omission. Excuse my dog shaking in the background. Hope they sit their ass down. Wow. And, uh, yeah. So, pretty much, um, Iyana, like, did y'all have sex? Or whatever. And she's still denying the whole situation. And Iyana's like, you know what? Your whole attitude, how you carry on, how you just cut people off, how you just nasty and everything like that. Your whole shit is just, you just emotionally violent. You know what I'm saying? The way you just come off, how you just shady and how you just project yourself and everything. So, Iyana's like, you know what? I'm just totally restricting you from Jackie and her healing and I'm, I'm done with you. Okay? So, boom. And, um... She like, you know, you off the damn show at this point in time. We done interviewing you. We done had our little two seconds of fame, okay, girl? So, boom, we move right along. We meet Miss Jackie in the woods, Miss Iyala does, and everything. And pretty much, um, 
Iyana's like, let me play back some stuff for you. Because you said a lot of stuff in that audio. And she pretty much plays back how she called her sister uh, 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 a big nose bee. And how she, you know, I'm a beast. And I'm going to expose you and everything like that. And how you did that in the third. And she like, where did I, that all come from? Because they had to have come from somewhere for you to be sitting here spewing out all these things about your sister. And it must be a self-reflection of how you feel about yourself. And a lot of times whenever people... People going ham and stuff like that on people. It's how they really feel about themselves deep down inside. Especially when it's a close family member or something like that. So, you know, she really read her the fuck down on that situation. And, you know, Miss Jackie was just like, you know, shit, true that. Or whatever, you know. So, um... You know, Jackie's just like, you know, I just pretty much went in. Because I want her to feel the same way that I do and everything. Because you... You know, you, you, you had put me through some shit, girl, you know, and then she goes into the whole spiel how, you know, when they was growing up, because Iyala wants to know why she feel like she was raping, why is Tanya denying the whole situation? She like, no, whenever I was nine years old and Tanya ass was 12, she used to get in bed with me and molest me or whatever, the same way such and such used to molest her, and the reason why I know she used to get raped and molested is because I used to hear them in the room and I used to go run across the damn street and call 911 on his motherfucking ass or whatever and that's the same damn way or whatever uh, or him or she cause I don't know who they was really referring to and that's the and that's how she uh, broke that thing down to the people and when I was like yes honey go ahead and let that thing out and let the cat out the bag and that's the reason why Miss Tanya don't, didn't want you to spew your stuff or whatever she was sitting here denying because you got facts or whatever and I don't see why uh, a teenager or a, a single digit grade level child would sit here and make up something like that all the way up into their adult years. No, you saw this, you heard this, and you experienced this, and definitely, Miss Jackie, just, I got sincerity from you right off the bat. And I feel like that you that you really went through these things or whatever, because I really don't, I don't, I don't get that you would have a reason to sit here and lie or whatever about this situation. I mean, here, you coming here admitting the fact that you trying to get your shit together, so why would you lie about this situation? Well, that's my opinion. Maybe y'all may think otherwise. Please comment below about this whole situation because I would love to hear about it from y'all or whatever because y'all give me a whole nother outlook and maybe I may be thinking one directional. But I think that Miss Jackie ass was, was on it. Okay, because these prostitutes, old school crackheads and stuff like that, they don't hold nothing back. So why the hell would she sit here and lie about this situation? And um, so boom. We get on to Nikki and Brianna. Excuse me. Yes, yeah, Taylor Jerry's um on dead rum, spice rum. Okay, and uh, we get on to Nikki and Brianna, and uh, pretty much Nikki's like, yeah, I was raised by my grandma. You know what I'm saying? And um, Brianna's like, yeah, I was raised by my mama. You know, Nikki wants a relationship with Miss Jackie, but, um, you know, she feels like that her whole relationship with Miss Tanya, because Miss Tanya feels like, I guess she feels like that she's partly the mama, too, or whatever, that she had to step in, and, you know, she feels like that that's the interference or whatever between she can't get over the fact that Tanya had a whole lot of dealings in her life and Jackie had little to no dealings in her life. You know, and, and I get that or whatever because you're going to always attract the people that you fond of. So I definitely understand um, Nikki in this particular situation and everything. And um, Brianna's just kind of sitting there like, you know, I'm here because my mama, I know she got some shit, but I'm here to protect her. I'm here to be her rock. I'm here to dang going to be her support and everything while all the whole world is coming at my damn mama. So I feel her on that situation right there. You know, um... You know, Nikki's just kind of like, you know, every time I get on the phone, my damn mama, you know, we can't be on the phone no more than 15, 20, 30 minutes without her snapping on me. And so that right there can kind of create a wall because, you know, nobody ever really wants to be snapped on by their parents or come down on by their parents and everything, especially when you're trying to build a relationship. So I get where she's coming from in that situation. And, um, you know, just know, girl, that... 
you know, she's trying to deal with her shit. You know, she ain't never really had a chance. You know, I understand that you got your side of the story coming from your grandma and everything. But she never really had a chance to be a mama. And so she's lashing out because she feels like that she she let you down or whatever. And so that's probably where that anger and stuff is coming from, from guilt and stuff. So, um, you know, um, pretty much... Uh, Nikki was pretty much told by the grandma and the aunt, Tanya, that, um, you know, your mama didn't really want no parts of you. She was out here in the street. She was doing this, that, and the third. And young, like, oh, hell no. Nobody had the right to tell your mama's story but your mama. And that's just fact right there. I feel you, Iyanla, because nobody can really tell a story outside of the person that is actually living the damn story or whatever. People can give a perspective, but they can't actually give the full on 100% story and everything. They can only give their version. So being the fact that Miss Jackie is ready to come along and ready to share that story, I feel like that Miss Damn Nikki, you, your ass should have been ready to damn receive the damn story and everything. So, you know, Nikki's like, uh uh, whatever, Yanla, I ain't trying to hear that shit. And Yanla, like, girl, I'm telling you what the hell is going on or whatever. You can roll your eyes, you can stump your feet, but this black girl, you sure can be. That's kind of what me, Mr. Yanla kind of looked at her ass or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, you know, and she has all the 100% facts right there because. You hearing it from somebody else that has a bias that is pretty much has built up this wall of animosity towards your mother and they have been feeding you all this shit and that's what a lot of people do where they like to infuse shit into people's heads or whatever and manipulate their mind. So now motherfucking damn Nikki can't even see her head straight and don't even really want to hear her mama or whatever because she done been fed all this bullshit for the 28 years of her living and everything. So boom. Um... Nikki's um pretty much uh delusional about the situation. Then she goes to her whole little spiel how she done had eight pregnancies, each one has ended up in a miscarriage, and I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a lot right there. By you having that many miscarriages and stuff, I see why that this is a near and dear situation to your heart. Because you know, you've always wanted to be a mother and the eight chances that you have had a chance to be a mother it has been stripped away from you all the way up until the last shot that you um, was carrying and they passed away at, at 36 weeks before you had them. That's a detrimental situation that can happen to any woman and my heart goes out to you and I understand where you had this whole kind of thing towards your mother because you like, damn, I, I'm aspiring to be a mother and how could a person do this to their mother because do this to that child? Because I would, I would never do this to my child and everything if I was able to have a full, complete, viable pregnancy. And so, like I say, it, that was that was just crazy as hell. Um, and uh, also, we find out that too, you know, due to Miss Jackie's verbal abuse, she pretty much then came at damn Nikki uh, doing one of her baby showers. And the reason why Nikki has this hostility towards hostility towards her mother is because pretty much Miss Jackie is like, you know, doing one of her pregnancies like, I hope your motherfucking baby that and boom, her baby ends up passing away and so she like, oh, you done spoke death upon my child amongst all these other ones or whatever and so that's kind of why Nikki just kind of over her mama and everything and she really ain't trying to hear shit that she got to say. Or whatever. So, you know, like I say, Nikki, keep your head up and everything. Kudos to you and everything for just being strong and putting your story out there like that. Because that takes a lot. I mean, for real, for real. For real, for real, for real, for real. And um, so let's move right on. You know, like I say, y'all let some girls know, like, you know, y'all apple ain't fall too far from the tree. In the same way you put out this whole shit or whatever and your attitude and everything miss nikki or whatever that's the same way that your mother does and everything and y'all are pretty much the same person and y'all both you and brianna to break this generational curse of being pretty much uh a bitch or whatever so let's just that's pretty much how y'all put it i'm sorry you know and uh so boom 
you know, you got Miss Jackie. She probably sits down with her daughters and everything. And, uh, you know, she pretty much lays it all bare. Like, I wanted to be your mom. I wanted to be there, Nikki. You know what I'm saying? Don't ever feel slighted or whatever. I really just know. Whatever you was fed or whatever, it's the complete opposite and everything. You was literally taken from me. And I was kicked out the house and everything. And um, I'm, I'm here now. And I'm trying to be your mother now. And, um, you know, Nikki breaks down. She's like, you know, I love you, mama. I love your ass. You know what I'm saying? I love you to death. And you always be my mother. I love you unconditionally. You know, I just wish that you would have been there and everything in the earlier parts and stuff. And we would have had this relationship, you know, beforehand. But, you know, y'all got a chance to build y'all shit now, girl. So, don't live in that, you know. Go ahead and do y'all thing because y'all did a really good little breakthrough on this episode and everything. And, you know, and Jackie pretty much reveals that, you know, she wants to change. She wants to be a better person and everything. And so, you know, um, the daughters is like, you know, they want to take part in, like, helping um, Miss Jackie change. And, you know, that was definitely big for them because... You know, they both had their shit. And I feel like the sisters um, within themselves, Brianna and um, Nikki, they they had their own little thing. And they, you can tell they hadn't bonded or whatever because they had their own reservations. But I'm glad they was able to come together on this situation and all that. And, um, you know, Jackie, she's real committed to change and everything. And like I say... You know, we get to the end of the episode and everybody seems to be like they're communicating, you know, um, uh, what's her name? Tanya done pretty much unblocked, uh, Jackie from all communication because she, we did find out that she had blocked her from all social media, media, phone calls, text messages, everything. And she has unblocked everybody's communicating and working cohesively as a family. You know, this thing ended up being a great situation at the end of the day. I just, I'm really happy for them because I really want to see how this whole situation, and I hope Iana does like a follow-up and stuff because they, they ended up really coming together. And I really did feel like that Miss Jackie had a breakthrough situation with her daughter. And I feel like her daughter's really got a chance to see where she was coming from. So this whole situation just ended up being a good thing. And like I said, we find out that Tanya and Miss Jackie, they're back communicating. That's a plus within itself because all you got is family at the end of the day. You can't be sitting up here beefing with your damn family and stuff. That shit is not cool. It ain't cool for none of that shit. And, you know, those that are, please find a way to make amends and, and, and to let that shit go because it's bigger than that because at the end of the day when everybody else is dead or whatever and all your friends go away all you got is family to fall back on and that's what this whole episode was really about I appreciate this episode I'm glad that everybody was open to change and that they, they were making progressive steps towards the change of stuff so boom Iyana you did your motherfucking thing on this year right there you opened some doors and you really did your thing like I said this whole season you got your work cut out for you girl because next episode we got mr motherfucking hazel e ass from motherfucking love and hip-hop hollywood and we already know how her face done changed three to four to five six seven eight times since that whole season premiered and everything and uh we gonna find out the tea on her and what she got going on with her family member and stuff so boom we gonna get into miss e yala next week so boom quick plug right quick i know you all see these nice shirts right here behind me and the one that i have on right here this is my new brand that i'm going to be launching called joe Bags. i've talked about it in my other videos and stuff and um, i spent the whole day making shirts and stuff and different little samples and stuff and um like i say that's going to be up pretty soon the website and everything so i want you all to get into that and all that, like it's like I said, in my very first YouTube video, you got 365 days to get this shit done to make something happen towards your goal. And that's pretty much what I've been doing. So, like I say, tonight's review was off the damn chain. Iyala, you did your motherfucking thing tonight. Thank you all for just tuning in to this whole review. I want you all to subscribe if you haven't already. Please, this is Mike Cardi of Mike Cardi TV. People, please be good to yourself. Stay loving on yourself. And stay telling yourself that you look good because you are beautiful beings. Okay? People, have a great night. I love you all. Love you all. Bye.